Greetings. The study titled An Overview of Personal Loan Segment and the Importance of Financial Literacy is done by Dr. V. Sudha, Associate Professor, Anadarsh College for Women, Chennai. Since the onset of pandemic, the economy has witnessed a financial crunch resulting in an increased demand for personal loans, especially in the small ticket personal loan segment, commonly known as STPL. Traditionally, the lending arena was predominantly dominated by public, private sector banks in the big ticket segment and NDFCs in the small ticket segment. With the entries of fintech companies, the service provider's ecosystem has completely transformed, became more competitive, customer friendly and most importantly digital. On the flip side, there are many shady app-based lenders who have mushroomed in the digital space, floating RBI guidelines. These digital loan sharks have trapped many gullible borrowers by charging high processing fees, heavy rates of interest and exorbitant penalties for overdue. This study focuses on eliciting the respondents' financial literacy and gives an overview of the personal loan segment and the importance of financial literacy in the area of loan segment. The objectives of the study are to understand the loan profile with respect to academic educational qualification and to evaluate the financial literacy and its impact on loans. The demographic profile of the respondents were captured in the form of a tabular column wherein the age, gender, marital status, monthly income, work profile, educational qualification were focused. Especially types of loan used by the respondents whether they have taken loans from secured bank or unsecured bank loans, um, secured NBFC loans, unsecured NBFC loans, credit card loans, payday loans were also captured in the demographic profile. In order to understand if there is any significant association between certain demographic variables like age, gender, marital status and the sector they work with the type of loan possessed, hypotheses were developed and tested using chi-square analysis. The null hypothesis reads as there is no significant association between age of the respondents and type of the loan possessed. Null hypothesis 2, there is no significant association between gender and the type of loan possessed. Null hypothesis 3, there is no significant association between marital status and the type of loan possessed. And null hypothesis 4, there is no significant association between sector they work with the type of loan possessed. The result reveals that at 1% significance level, the null hypothesis is rejected indicating that variables like age, gender, marital status and whether or not they work in finance sector do have a significant impact on the type of loan possessed. The first objective of the study is to understand the loan profile of the respondents with respect to their academic educational qualification. In order to study this, the number of loans were evaluated as a function of educational qualification. It can be observed from the table that 54.4% of the total respondents have reported to have at least one liability. Among the respondents with loans, postgraduates hold 40% of the total loans while those with PhDs have a minimum of 10.5% of the total loans. It can be inferred that with an increase in the educational qualification beyond post-graduation, the loan holdings have decreased. All the respondents with at least one loan were checked on certain loan discipline behavior and the result reveals that 75% of them have admitted to have their EMI charges controlled within 40% of their monthly income, while 63% each prioritize their debts based on interest rates, overhead charges, fees tenure, uh, and 83% denied the risky idea of taking a loan to settle another loan. Overall, 45.5% uh, do not have even a single liability and it implies that the respondents are financially disciplined and have a strong control over their expenses. Suitable hypotheses were developed to check if demographic factors such as gender and marital status have any strong influence on the financial knowledge. T-test was conducted to test for the significant difference between gender, marital status with financial knowledge. The result indicates that at 1% significance level, the null hypothesis is rejected, which indicates that there is a significant difference between gender and financial knowledge and also there is a significant difference between marital status and financial knowledge. In order to determine the financial literacy level of the respondents, 
Five questions developed by Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA. Focusing on interest compounding, inflation, bond pricing, relationship between length of the mortgage and the overall interest rate, and risk diversification were tested. The result reveals that majority of the respondents, 68.87% to be precise, had correctly answered the risk diversification question, while only 49.19% had given correct response to the relationship between length of the mortgage and the overall interest rate. Also, it can be observed that 7.09% could not answer even a single question correctly, which indicates a very weak financial knowledge. In order to determine the type of loan possessed, the respondents were given choices like secured and unsecured bank loans, secured and unsecured NBFC loans, credit card loans and payday loans. In fact, there was another choice given for no outstanding loans. The table reveals that uh, the liability holding is also a function of one's financial knowledge. As financial knowledge improves, the respondents tend to have a discipline regarding their loan status. The percentage of respondents with no outstanding loans have significantly improved with every increase in the number of correct responses for the financial literacy question. On the other hand, loans from NBFCs have shown increase with every wrong answer. The respondents who could not answer any financial literacy were the ones to resort to questionable payday loan scheme. It establishes, as a matter of fact, that as financial knowledge improves, there is a notable careful behavior established by the respondents especially the source from where the loans are taken. In conclusion, the study has established that financial literacy results in better debt management. With the surge of credit products available in the market, especially in the digital platform, the role of financial literacy is very critical. It educates the individual to decipher the red flags well in advance and help select the credit products or services wisely from authorized sources throwing light on financial commitments and its impact on their personal life. Strategically planned debt along with sticking to a financial discipline of controlling the EMIs within a certain percentage of one's monthly income would help demonstrate a good debt servicing behavior leading to building a good credit score. Prioritizing debt based on interest rates, overhead charges, fees, tenure and a well-planned debt consolidation is an intelligent move and helps debt management. As a matter of fact, the Reserve Bank of India, various commercial banks, institutions, both government and NGO have been taking efforts to inculcate financial literacy in a very structured way. It is suggested to improve the content and increase the number of channels through which the financial literacy can be delivered in a more effective and efficient way, especially in the context of debt management. Debt. The very connotation may sound very overwhelming, yet it is not a bad thing altogether. Equipping with financial literacy and adhering to financial discipline will ensure building a good credit score and paving way for a sound financial health. Thank you.